Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in the last few days something really amazing happened and that was that my YouTube channel reached 100 subscribers. Woo! Now I know this doesn't sound like a lot when I compare myself to other YouTube channels however for someone like me who's literally done nothing of this kind of thing before, I've never done editing before, I've never shot in front of a camera before, this was a huge achievement for me and I just want to say a really really big thank you to each and every one of you who has followed me on my journey and I am hoping more and more people will get on board and we'll see this channel continue to grow in the further months and years to come. So I kind of wanted to do something really different different today compared to my normal personal finance videos and take this opportunity to impart some of my wisdom because I do have wisdom now on how to start a new YouTube channel for beginners because when I first started out I was watching all kinds of vlogs uh, reading blogs as well just to really help me get started but there was still so much that I thought could have been said that hasn't been said before and I'm gonna share that with you today so without further ado I'm Kozan from Financial Madness helping you be better with your money So I'm gonna break this video into two sections. Just gonna quickly mention some of the technical stuff about some of the equipment that you need to start up a YouTube channel and then go into the more sort of creative stuff in terms of scripting, how to edit, etc., etc. So starting off with the technical stuff. Now one of the things most people think when getting a YouTube channel is that you really need to spend a lot of money to get the nice camera that you really need, some of the lighting equipment and a good microphone to start off with. But you really, really don't have to. So for me, I'm actually just using my mobile phone. It is a Google Pixel 3 XL um, so it's not even state-of-the-art but I think generally it takes really decent video quality and I think for most of the new smartphones that are out right now it more or less does the same I've used my partner's one who's got uh, one of the latest iPhones and uh, yeah it's really really good quality so I really suggest especially at the beginning phase of your YouTube career just stick with your mobile phone just to save yourself a little bit extra money um, and then obviously as time progresses you can of course upgrade your equipment and and go for a much more fancier SLR camera or whatever they're called. Now the next thing that you should get is some lighting equipment. Now lighting equipment can be very expensive however um, for myself I kind of just stick with a lighting ring. Um, I think I got this on Amazon and it was no more than £20. Um, it's really really good. Now I personally think the light ring is really sufficient for the very beginning stage especially because there are some tricks that you can do to try and improve the lighting quality without spending any money at all and that would be to film during the day which is something I'm not doing. I know I'm recording this at four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon and I can already see it's gonna go sunset probably by the end of this video it's gonna be pitch black because I take a while to record so yeah try and obviously record during daylight hours and usually in post-production you can also add some brightness to your videos as well so as long as there's sufficient lighting you should be all okay to go now the last thing that you should get is a microphone now I've got a really nice and easy clip-on microphone it actually cost me no more than 16 pounds um, I don't know if I'll show it on, try and show it on screen, but yeah, it's literally wired from the phone all the way up to my uh, shirt. And yeah, it works really, really well because compared to what it would sound like, you can see there is a massive, massive difference. So it's worth investing in a microphone. Now the microphone, again, doesn't have to be expensive. As I mentioned, I only paid 16 pounds for my one. Um, obviously you can get more expensive editions, but I took the approach of, I don't know how my YouTube career is gonna turn out, so let me spend the least amount of money at the beginning. And if it works out, if my content's great and people are enjoying it, then I'll think about upgrading my equipment a little bit later on down the line. So those are the three technical equipments that I think everyone should at least get as a minimum when starting a YouTube channel. Now obviously you could argue that you don't need all three of them, however, getting some lighting with a microphone really helps you progress into that sort of quality area. Um, I'll put a link in the description box down below of all the equipments that I have purchased and that all work with a Google Pixel 3, so if you've got something similar, um, these should all work for you. So that's all the technical stuff out the way, and now let's move on to, I don't know what you call it, maybe the creative stuff. Um, so yeah, the first one being is to just film and record your first YouTube video. Now I'm not joking when I tell you that um, when I bought this equipment, the microphone and the lighting ring, I bought that in December 2019. I bought it as a little Christmas present to myself and I thought I was gonna start filming in January. But, however, I became so obsessed with scripting all my videos, making sure everything was perfect, trying to brainstorm new ideas, and then it kind of just fizzled out. And then I realized up until June, I hadn't actually done anything. And I spent all this time trying to prepare for this video that when it actually came to me filming it, I still felt 
unprepared because it's hard to explain but the whole experience of talking in front of a camera especially if you're someone like me and who's never done it before is just a whole different ball game and unless you do it you can't really prepare for it so my advice is once you've got your first script all ready and prepared just go ahead and film it straight away don't worry about your next episode or the video number three or trying to make your video perfect in every possible way because you're bound to make mistakes so just get over the first hurdle and film and then you can then judge on how you can make the next video better and then from that video you'll know how to make the next video better as well so it's going to be like a small progression so yeah my first tip just film my next tip is before you start planning your YouTube channel is to at least have 20 video ideas of what you can record. Because one of the worst things that you can do to yourself is to film maybe five episodes and then you're absolutely stuck on what you want to record. So having 20 videos in your backlog is A, a probably good indication that you have a lot to talk about on YouTube and B, you don't have to worry week on week on what your next video is going to be because you've already planned out at least 20 to 30 videos in your backlog. One tool that I use that is really really good is something called Trello it's kind of like an interactive whiteboard where you can sort of jot down notes every time you think of an idea I use this to jot down any idea that I have for a video sometimes I look back on it and I think it's stupid but at least I have that idea down on paper and then there's some ideas that I actually just forget and then I look at it and I'm like oh I'm so glad I wrote it down so tip number three is to create a logo for your channel obviously have some artwork as well for the cover page of your YouTube channel as well and obviously have some ideas on on what your YouTube thumbnails are going to be as well. One tool again is really really useful is something called Canva. It is a completely free service although there is a premium version. It's really really easy to use and for someone who maybe doesn't have much experience in sort of the creative department Canva is really really good in just building really good but very simplistic logo or artwork ideas. So I highly recommend them in using them as your tool to create your logos, your artwork and your thumbnails as well. Now the fourth tip is an issue that I faced that would never have come into my mind unless I did the recording, which is why that is my very first tip in this video. So the issue is, is that if you're recording on your mobile phone, and you're using your main camera, so the one that's on the back, because the front camera is really poor in quality, how on earth can you see if you're in the right frame, if the phone hasn't magically switched off, um, or if you even know you're recording at all? So this actually really stressed me out at the beginning. Um, I was kind of doing all kinds of like acrobatics. I was like doing all this kind of like pointing and stuff. Um, and it just, no, no, no. Um, so I found a really useful free tool again, and it's called A-Power. So A-Power is an app that you download on your mobile phone. And it is also an app that you download on your laptop. I have a Windows, but I'm pretty sure it also works for a Mac. So basically what it does is you can link your mobile phone to your desktop and it will mirror everything that you see. So the way that I've got my setup here is that I've obviously got my phone recording me straight here. But on my monitor here, I can see what my phone is doing because it's being mirrored on this application. So the mirroring is entirely done over Wi-Fi, so you don't have to worry about extra cabling. However, one thing that is really useful, if you connect it with your USB at the very beginning, you can actually click on the mirror and it will control your phone. So what I do before I record is I connect my phone to my laptop via USB. I set up the application on A-Power so that I can have control of my phone through the application on my Windows. And yeah, I get my A-Power thing all set up on there. Then I disconnect it because I only have one USB port on my phone and that's where my microphone goes in. So I put my microphone in, I set up the A power again but this time on Wi-Fi but because I did it on USB first I now have full control of my phone using the application on my desktop so if I wanted to start recording I just have to hover my mouse over the button and it will start recording if I want to stop recording I can just click I don't have to worry about getting up and clicking it over there um, I don't have to buy any fancy equipment it's all for free and it's really really useful and I haven't seen anyone actually share this piece of advice before and I don't know why this was actually a really quick Google for me to find the software and it just saved me so much time because I wasn't constantly worrying about whether my phone ran out of battery, if it's still recording and things like that because I can actually now see it on the screen. So yeah, um, I'll put a link in the description box down below as well if you want to download the application. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate if you like, comment and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. So one tip if you are having to record in in poor lighting especially. I learned this the hard way because there was one time in the week where I had to record during the evening 
um, for the upcoming Monday video. And what I found was because the lighting in the room was so poor, my phone really struggled to adjust for the lighting and focus. So every time I kind of did a move, um, the video would just sort of have these moments of really white light and then it will just come back really dark, white light, come really dark. So I only realized when I was in post-production and then I realized the video quality was so poor that I had just had to scrap it and re-record again. I think that was the time where I had to miss a week because I literally just ran out of time of recording. So now when I am recording, I always make sure that my autofocus and auto exposure is locked. So that way my phone doesn't have to always adjust every time I make a slight movement. And that way you'll avoid having that kind of lighting issue in your videos. Now moving on to tip number six, and this is scripting. Now it's really important before any video that you write some notes on what you want to say in the video. Now there are two ways that you can actually do this. So you can do the outline way or you can fully script it word for word on what you want to say to the camera. Now the outline way is really good because you've obviously given yourself a high level point of view of all the topics that you want to touch on so you're unlikely to miss anything. Also you're allowing yourself to have sort of an open dialogue with the camera which allows you to be a bit more authentic and really show off your personality and I think that's what people connect to when they watch a YouTube channel. So you might be thinking that the outline way is the best way to do it and I do think it is the best way however at the very beginning I don't know if it's actually always possible to do it. I know I for me could not do the outline way at the very beginning, even now, I sometimes fully script my YouTube videos before I record. So the reason why I choose scripting is there's a weird thing about talking to the camera. If you were in a room with me and you wanted to learn about, I don't know, index funds forever, I can talk and talk and you will understand everything that I say. However, trying to convey that in a short YouTube video where you have to be very precise in every word that you say, that is another level that is actually really difficult and it's something that I've not yet mastered, although I do think I am getting a little bit better at it as time goes on. Because I actually did try to use the outline version at the very beginning when I was recording my first few videos and I would literally, no word of a lie, be two and a half hours in front of the camera because I couldn't really say what I wanted to say and it was two and a half hours for what, like a 10 minute video? Now I'm recording about an hour's footage for 10 minutes, so still not great because I do make a lot of mistakes, but the time obviously from two and a half hours to one hour is just so much better. And that was because I scripted it word for word. Now moving on to editing. Now I know there's a whole bunch of software that you can use. I'm on a Windows and one of the best free softwares that I found was something called Shotcut. As I mentioned, it's free to use. And for me personally, I don't think it's that scary of a software when it comes to editing videos. And I'm someone that doesn't really have that much experience when it comes to editing editing videos and I just thought this was quite intuitive, really simple to navigate. There are going to be some things that I didn't understand but a quick simple Google search easily solves my problems. So Shotcut is a really useful tool for if you are deciding to edit your own videos um, when you start off your YouTube uh, channel. Now you'll probably guess this but through the life cycle of a YouTube video, so you go through scripting, you go through filming, you go through editing and, and then you go through posting it and by far editing is probably what you're going to be spending most of your time doing through a YouTube video life cycle. Now, I kid you not, there was a time period where editing really, really was something that would just literally take hours and hours of my time. So I'm going to share with you one thing that I wish I did at the very beginning when I started filming, um, which saves me now a huge amount of time now when it comes to editing. Because um, I kid you not, one of my videos actually took me almost 10 hours to edit. Now I'm roughly averaging around about two to three hours of editing, which I know I can probably still cut down further. but doing this one tip cut my editing average by more than a half. So the way I did this was to film in segments. So what I used to do was press record on my mobile phone and talk through from beginning to end my entire YouTube video. So imagine at the very beginning, I was filming what, maybe two hours at a time a video and I would have to go through two hours of footage to then edit the pieces that I wanted and discard the things that I didn't want. So now what I do is I break my video into segments. So taking this video as an example, I'm going through tips on how to start your first YouTube. Tip number one, I will talk to the camera, say what it is, and then stop recording. Let's start recording again. Tip number two, say what it is, stop recording. Tip number three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now the two benefits that you get from doing this, from the stop and starting, because one, editing just becomes a little bit more manageable because instead of sifting through a two hour long video like I used to do, I just sift through maybe short six minute videos, edit it down, then I move to the next clip, 
edit it down, move on to the next clip. And also the second benefit that you get is usually when I can't say my lines, my last take is usually my best take. So once you've split your video into segments, I take each segment and I tend to edit it backwards and try to find the last take of every line that I try to say. And that way I just completely ignore the other takes because I know I didn't perform them well and I don't have to watch them again and that saves me a lot of time. So yeah, recording segments, don't record from start to finish. Now the next tip is that you really need to have a passion for your YouTube channel. Now the reason why I say this is obviously this is going to be dependent on the type of content and the type of quality that you want to be sharing with your viewers but YouTube requires a lot of hard work and requires a lot of hours to be dedicated to it. Because for the majority of us, unless you're willing to pay someone to do some of the steps for you, you're going to have to do the scripting yourself, you're going to be having to do the filming yourself, the editing, the posting, the advertising, and it's all a lot of work to do. So having that passion is really, really important. Otherwise, you're literally just gonna be burning out really quickly and then you're just gonna quit YouTube soon after. So really think carefully if this is something that you really want to do because yeah you could be an overnight sensation but more often than not you will have to work and grind your way to the top of the YouTube charts. So make sure you have that drive, you have that passion, and yeah, there's no stopping in what you can do on YouTube, I'm sure. So on to the very final tip, and this is to make sure that when you do post your videos, your description box and your tags are filled out to the best of your ability. Now there is a really, really useful tool called TubeBuddy. So for you to really understand why this is so important, you need to really grasp how YouTube and up showing your videos to the relevant users because they're not going to show your video to everyone they're only going to show it to people that are interested in your content so for them to figure out who is interested in your content is probably going to be through the search bar so if I make a video on how credit cards work I need to make sure that the description box, the title, and all my tags have the word credit card plastered all over them. So when the user is searching for how to find the best credit card or what do credit cards mean, your video will be shown to them on the screen because without that information, your video will just get lost and no one will see it. So tags and description boxes and titles are really, really important. And TubeBuddy actually helps you try and find the best tags for you. Think of tags like Instagram, Instagram hashtags, they're there to help your video be discovered to the viewer. So yeah, using TubeBuddy is a really useful free tool. Again, it's free, although there is a premium version, which is really, really useful. I myself have actually paid, I think it's like 50 pounds for the year to have TubeBuddy as the premium service. It helps you suggest good tags that might be good for your video. It gives you tips on whether you've optimized your post as best as possible. And it just opens the doors in how much insight that you can get into making sure that your videos are suitably optimized to being found on YouTube. Now I do actually have an affiliate link with TubeBuddy. So if you are thinking about getting TubeBuddy, feel free to click the link in the description box down below to get it for your own desktop. Oh, would you look at that, it's actually dark. <laughs> Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite tip was. And if you want, share your own pearls of wisdom too. It would be really great to hear some other ideas because I'm sure I've missed some. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel. And remember, I release a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later. <laughs>